Welcome to the week one go to session. This is the first of four sessions we're going to hold this month. Uh, welcome to English composition. We are going to cover some important material tonight, mostly the activities you have to work on for week one. Week one is interrupted because obviously it's the Thanksgiving week. Um, as a matter of fact, some students have been already checking in for the most part, but I do have some people who are kind of MIA, but that tends to happen during Thanksgiving week because people treat it as sort of <laughs> the entire week is off. Uh, but no, we do have class Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday too, I think, although I think the school shuts down. I forget at what time Wednesday. Um, let me make a couple quick kind of like global announcements. Um, I'm going out of town. I'm sure other people are as well. Um, 1 p.m. Thank you, Juan. Uh, and Jacob. Um, yeah, I'm flying out of town. Okay, I'm flying to Missouri. So I'm leaving Orlando tomorrow at 1 p.m. I will be checking in, but it might be once per day that I'm checking email. Okay, but don't let that stop you from com uh, commenting or contacting me with any questions that you have. Um, but it might mean that, yeah, once a day I'm checking. Um, and speaking about sending me messages, here's the FSO platform. Okay, the easiest way to, to communicate with me is to use the little envelope icon up here, because when you send me a direct message, it lights up my envelope icon, and then I know that there's a message waiting for me. Um, you've probably noticed that under any activity, you have the ability to leave comments. That's okay, too, but this little bell here is the notifications icon, and I get notifications anytime you do anything. For example, if I click on this, I can see that Daniel has submitted a lot of the, anytime you complete an activity, I get a notification. Um, anytime you submit an assignment, I get a notification. Basically, anytime you sneeze or cough, I get a notification. And when a comment is left under an activity, it goes here. Um, I do try to search for comments, obviously, so I can respond. Uh, and obviously, I'm not, I'm not complaining. I understand from the student's perspective, it seems completely natural. I've just completed this activity. I have a question about it. I'm going to leave a comment. And that's that's fine. Um, but I do have to hunt and search for it a little bit. Um, whereas a message goes right to me and only messages come here. Okay, So if you have something pretty important to ask and you need quick feedback, um, the message icon is going to get to me the fastest. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and get started. I have a little keynote presentation to go over. We're going to talk about what we're working on this month. And we're even going to look at some examples to get you prepared for the week one assignment. There's a worksheet that needs to be filled out. Um, we have adjusted some dates, for example, the week one assignments which is this guy here. This is the major assignment for the month. Assignment number one, preparing to write. It's a worksheet that needs to be filled out. Um, normally that would be due on Sunday, but because of the holiday weekend, it's due Monday at midnight. Okay, and we're gonna talk about how to prepare for this assignment and to complete it accurately in today's session, along with some other things. Okay, so let me see if I can blow this guy up a little bit. There we go. Okay, so again, welcome to English Composition. I look forward to working with you all this month. Um, things are going to be a little bit rushed because of the Thanksgiving interruption, uh, but things tend to move quickly anyway. Um, four weeks is over before you know it. You probably know this from your previous classes, creative presentation, psychology of play, and so on. So yeah, it's a fast ride. Um, but I think I'm looking forward to having fun and also learning along the way. Um, yeah, this, this information, we have a syllabus, course resources, etc. Um, and sometimes, yeah, it's hard to find because it's not in an obvious place like here. <laughs> um, you have a little about tab. I think on your viewpoint, it's maybe a little symbol that's kind of near around here somewhere. Um, I don't know if you have an about tab on your end, but anyway, if you have a little icon here or an about tab, if you click on it, you'll find these course documents. Okay, so of course syllabus, um, a little visual map of how the month looks in terms of when things are due. Um, I'm gonna click on this guy real quickly, resources for success, because this guy has a lot of important information. Um, the library page, okay, if you're not sure how to get there through Full Sail Connect, um, you can always click on this link. 
uh, you know, the general phone number for full sale, et cetera. Um, really important stuff here is on the second page, though. Um, contact information for the Student Support Center. Um, and FSO support, okay? Um, and by the way, always call FSO support if you're having any sort of tech issues or textbook issues. Okay, we're using the McGraw-Hill textbook and related activities. Um, but every so often a student has a problem because in order to fully register, you have to use a code that should have been sent to your full sale email address. And I get a lot of questions about, I didn't receive a code or maybe a student accidentally deleted an email thinking it was junk. Um, and yet you need to contact FSO support. And textbook issues are among the most common issues that they deal with, uh, but call them, okay? Because when you call them, you get a response immediately. I call them. Um, if you email them, I've just heard they don't get back to you or it takes too long for them to get back to you. But if you call them directly, they'll answer your questions, not just about textbook issues, but any sort of tech problems you're having. Um, and don't worry if it's not, for example, if you're an online student and you haven't yet received your MacBook, they'll be able to help you with probably whatever issue you're having with your machine or your software, etc. Okay. And notice their hours, 8 a.m. to 2 a.m. So they're open late, okay? Um, and that's with good reason, because students often work late um, and they need help at any time. So yeah, be sure to remember by clicking the About tab or that little icon next to your name, um, all that factual information is there. Okay, let me get back to my presentation. Um, here is a little kind of graphic of what things look like. Okay, week to week, so we're here, we're in week one. Um, mostly you just have to concentrate on getting signed up for all those things. Is everybody here signed up for the McGraw-Hill site and turnitin.com? All assignments, okay, need to be handed in to turn it in. Uh, Juan asked, what can I do when I have another class at the same time? For example, right now I'm taking audio arts on campus. Yeah, uh, Juan, these sessions are recorded, so in the future, if you feel like you shouldn't be attending the session when you're literally in class, um, yeah, they're recorded. And after this session is over, I'm going to post the link. Uh, no, I don't want to end the training. Um, right here. Okay. This is where I'm going to post the link. And all you have to do is click on the link. Um, I think you have to fill out a quick registration, your name and your email address, and then you get access to the video. Okay, so yeah, not everybody can attend at 7 p.m. I choose 7 p.m. because I think it's more or less a good time, uh, but there are people who have other jobs, careers, they're busy, they have family things, dinner, or like Juan, they're in class right now. So yes, the every session is recorded because I have 75 students, and as you can see, we have 13 with us tonight. Um, the other 60 some odd students will have to watch the recording of the lecture. Okay, so Juan, I'd love for you to stay, but if, for example, if right now you think it's best to watch the video of this session later, you can do that. You won't hurt my feelings if you have to take off. Um, but yeah, okay, here's the breakdown, right? My cursor disappeared for some reason. Hold on. Ah. Forget it. <laughs> Hopefully it will appear again. Um, as you can see, in week two, we're going to focus on other activities, outline, researching. Week three is when you'll actually write a draft of your essay. Week four will be devoted to peer review and revising that essay once you've gotten feedback from both your peers and me. Um, real quickly about the late policy. Um, I'm not going to go through this timeline. Hopefully you can kind of look over it yourself right now visually. Uh, but essentially the English department's policy is there is no late work policy. <laughs> Things are due when they're due. Um, late work can be accepted if there's an emergency. There's supposed to be documentation. I'm a bit more flexible on that. As long as you tell me uh, 24 hours in advance, maybe you have to work a double shift at your job. Or maybe, yeah, it's a crazy weekend or you have a family commitment. Um, you know, the sorts of things that you don't necessarily have documentation for. I'm okay with that, but just let me know, okay? 
don't wait until 11.59 p.m. when something's due and then say, I need an extension. I'm pretty easygoing with giving extensions, but I like to know about it in advance. And as the timeline shows, be careful about waiting until the last second because FSO gets very, very busy. And then I get messages about how they, I couldn't upload my, my assignments or the website was giving me problems. And that's what happens when you get too close to, to deadline time. Okay. And if I could give a quick sort of tip or hint, um, I don't think this is a terribly difficult class. Yes, it moves fast. Yes, it's English class. So some of you might love that. Some of you might be a little bit frightened. Um, but a big secret to doing well is making sure that you get all activities completed. Okay. Pretty much students who complete all activities and do so with decent effort pass the class and pass it easily and pass it with, you know, hopefully a B or higher. Um, people get into trouble when they miss assignments. So for example, McGraw-Hill is not just home to the textbook, but you have these weekly modules you need to do. And maybe I should show that real quickly. Okay, so I'm gonna go to the McGraw-Hill page real quickly. Okay, um, this is how things look on my end. I know they look a little bit different on your end, uh, but you should have something that kind of looks like this, or at least has these words, right? Learn, smart, achieve. Um, basically, they're interactive modules. One is due every week. Um, you click on this and it takes you through the steps. Basically, it's an interactive learning activity. You have to do a little bit of reading, you have to do a little bit of learning, and then you have some questions to answer. Um, but the great thing about this activity is, is that they're kind of easy points and they're completely in your control. They're not subjective. In other words, an essay, I have to determine what the quality of the essay is. But these Learn from Our Achieve modules, one per week, if you complete them to 100%, you get all those points. You complete it to 86%, you get an 86. Um, and there are four of them, so that's 20% of your grade. Um, professionalism, which is a month long activity, which is worth 10%. So students who complete all activities are more or less professional in their communication with me and fellow students. You know, that's another easy grade that should be in your pocket. And when 30% of your grade is an A, um, yeah, it's it puts you in a very, very nice position. Um, so make sure that you complete activities and stay on top of these Learn Smart Achieve modules, and you should be in good shape. Um, in addition to attending these lectures or watching them, the recording of them, okay? Uh, Samantha says, I'm able to read but cannot answer the question. Samantha, are you referring to the McGraw-Hill module? Yes. Okay. Maybe you can tell me more about that issue in a message because I'm not sure what why that would happen. Um, if I click on the module, for example, and now we're in the student view of things. Come on, there, okay. And then it's going to ask you, for example, you can set up a schedule for how often you'd like to work on this during the week, how many days, right? You can choose, it doesn't matter. Even if you choose four days a week, you can go in there one day and complete them entirely. Um, I'll just keep it the way it is, okay? And then you click continue. And you can see it looks like I already started this one once. Let's start learning. Yeah, be quiet. Um, okay, you basically have to go through these things. It gives you an approximate schedule of how long it should take. Right, so um, you click on any of these guys and you can start working. And again, there's like here you have to read a short thing and then answer questions about it. Okay, so what is the note taking method used on this note card? Uh, it looks like direct quotation. And then you can say how confident you are. So if you're confident, you say, I know it. And the answer is correct. And every time you correct an answer a question correctly, um, the percentage goes down in terms of like what you need to do to complete it to 100%. So Samantha, I'm kind of doing this real quickly just to show you that on my end, I'm not having issues. I'm not saying that you're not, I'm not saying I'm doubting you. I'm just not sure that's why. My general advice is try a different browser. Um, I've heard, I use Chrome 
Chrome isn't my preferred browser. I like using Safari, which is a Mac browser, uh, but I've had to switch to Chrome because sometimes Chrome interferes, or excuse me, sometimes Safari or Firefox uh, interferes with even the FSO platform. So maybe try that and see if that works for you. Okay. Michael says, finished it today. It was pretty, pretty easy. Yeah, they're, they're pretty easy. Um, and they're easy points. Okay. So I, I, lots of students do like the McGraw Hill activities. They find them worthwhile, but for the few students who don't, at least, Hey, they're easy points. <laughs> Get that easy 30% in your pocket. And then that sets you up to do really, really well in the class. Um, okay, let me get back to my little speech. Okay, so there's the late policy. Um, why do you have to take English? Um, basically because communication is still important, including written communication. Um, I, I think most students know this. Even the students who sometimes rebel against that and say, well, wh who cares about writing? And it's a social media age and, you know, writing in complete sentences and following grammar that's uh you know that's as old as the hills that's for dinosaurs and no it isn't <laughs> you'll you'll find out pretty quickly um if you send out a resume or a cover letter that's just filled with punctuation error, error errors or spelling errors or lack of proofreading that's a quick way to find yourself on the dump pile um and just in general it's there still is importance and value in being able to communicate um, I'm not against social, social media. I'm not against texting, uh, but there still is a need for another kind of writing. Um, there are situations where you have to express yourself more fully, right? 140 characters won't cut it. A tweet or, excuse me, a, a Facebook post isn't enough. Um, and yeah, if your ability to communicate clearly, it helps you in the job world, but it, I think it just helps you as a, a, a thinker and a human being in general. And here you have some quotes, right? Being able to get your point across means the difference between success and failure. And that 97% of executives rate strong writing as an absolutely essential, okay? Right? It's very important. Um, that's 97% of executives. And some of you might be saying, well, I'm going into the music industry or I'm going to the film industry. Um, still, you're going to be dealing with these types. Or on your way up the success ladder, you might have to take a more formal job in your industry even. Okay. So yeah, I don't know. There's not a very powerful argument against writing. <laughs> I think that's the point I'd like to make. Um, you know, you, even if you personally feel that way, there's just not a very strong argument against being able to write. Okay. So what are we working on this month? This month, the core activity and everything we do this month is going to be working toward this is ad analysis. So you're going to write a short paper that essentially takes an ad and analyzes it. So what I'd like to spend a little bit of time on is practicing these skills because sometimes students feel like, okay, ad analysis, what is that? <laughs> that doesn't make much sense to me. Or what am I supposed to write about? Well, we're going to, we're going to generate ideas in this very session using some examples. Okay. Um, and yeah, I, I, the, the assignment is very straightforward. And I like to call it deceptively simple because it's so straightforward. You're going to choose one of six or seven approved ads. Actually, let me show the list real quickly. Do I still have it open? Yes. Okay. So under this is, by the way, the main assignment for this week. So it's underneath this activity right here. Um, there's a short video to watch. And you can also use this video as one of your three required research sources. You'll have to find two others or three others if you're not crazy about this one. Uh, but there's a short video to watch. And here are your ads. Okay, so what do we got here? Six, seven, eight, three, six. Oh, eight. Okay. Um, and some are print ads and they're labeled as such. We're going to look at some print ads in this session. And some are just, you know, commercials. Okay, the sort of thing you see on television, McDonald's, Allstate. Um, your job is to choose one of these because it's going to be the one that you use all month. Um, my recommendation, this will become clear as we look at some examples. Um, don't just choose the one that you think is coolest. Like the Hennessy one features the hip hop legend Nas. Um, yeah, you might think, oh, awesome, Nas. And that, that commercial looks really, really cool. But if you're not comfortable talking about what the ad is doing, because ad analysis is essentially what is the ad doing and how does it do it? In other words, we're getting underneath the hood 
of the ad itself and noticing things. Ad agencies get paid a lot of money to come up, come up with ads and no detail in an ad is accidental. So your task is to take a close look at your chosen ad and notice some of these elements that are at work. Okay. So yeah, you should be p picking an ad that you feel most confident in your ability to analyze. Um, and most students do, but occasionally I get students who get stuck with an ad where they're just not very comfortable talking about it. And I sort of gently say, well, maybe you should have chosen another one. So be very careful. Okay. Pick one. Um, yeah, it would be great if you find one that you both like and feel that you can speak about, but ultimately you should be choosing one. Like, I don't really care very much about Altoids winter green mints, <laughs> but I like this ad. Like that's the one I would choose to write about. Um, so yeah, you're going to choose one of these ads because you're going to be working on it all month. And essentially, yeah, we're looking at how do advertisers persuade their audiences? Okay, how do advertisers reach the audience that they want to reach? Um, I forget why I have this slide. Maybe because we're going to talk about the writing process? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, the course is set up so that we go through each of the stages of the writing process. Probably a lot of you are kind of familiar with this, even if you haven't been formally introduced to it. Um, I'm going to introduce it to you now. Um, the writing process is a circular process. It's also recursive. Recursive is just a fancy word for it's a process that is ongoing. It repeats. You can visit these steps more than once. So for week one, we're, we're here. Okay, We're in the brainstorming area. Brainstorming means choosing an ad that you want to work with and taking an initial look at it. Okay, and the worksheet, which we'll take a look at a little bit later. Um, yeah, the worksheet is the space you're going to fill out um, with your thoughts about what you've noticed in your chosen ad. Okay, this is all brainstorming. Week two, we're going to talk about research and, yeah, taking the things that you've noticed in the ad and that you put on the worksheet and using those to organize into an essay. Then you, of course, write the essay. You'll get feedback both from me and your peers, <clears throat> and you'll revise the essay. Okay, so you'll hand in the essay by the end of week three. You'll get feedback, and you'll use that feedback to revise. But you might revisit some of these steps. You might probably definitely have to look at the ad several times. You'll watch it once. Already notice some things, but you'll probably have to go back to it twice, three times. It'd be a good idea to take notes. Okay. Um, and yeah, a lot of these steps you might find yourself revisiting. Okay, but that's essentially the standard writing process. And notice that this process pretty much exists for any sort of creative endeavor. endeavor. So if you're a songwriter, there's probably something akin to brainstorming. Maybe not research, but organizing your material, composing the material, getting feedback. Okay, this is a pretty standard process. Uh, but yeah. Every week of this course is devoted, devoted to a separate step in that process. Um, and your task is to write an informative research essay. There is research required. You're going to find three sources um, that help support what you say in your ad analysis. But yeah, you're going to write an informative essay that analyzes how a specific ad works. And again, there's the breakdown of what we're doing week to week. As you can see, it matches the writing process. So let's take a look at an example. Okay, so here's an ad for Jeep. Um, and I'm just going to ask you right now, what are some things that we notice? Don't worry too much about making sense out of it or finding deeper meaning. Just tell me what stands out to you automatically. And you can use the chat box to say things. Just what do you notice right off the bat? Um, I, I don't, <laughs> I, I always feel bad because I don't know how to pronounce his name. Jamin, Jamon, Hamon, uh, Mr. Powell, you have your hand up. Is that by accident or you wanted to ask a question out loud? Uh, let's see. Emery says different images based on the angle. Okay, good. Can people see that? Because here, let me see. I actually have to get out of full screen mode to show you. But if I rotate this ad, okay, head on, it looks like a giraffe's head, right? And by the way, I'll zero in a little bit here. There's the Jeep tagline. See whatever you want to see. 
and it repeats here upside down. So one of the things is if it's upside down, it might ask, it might make you take a, you know, it might make you twist your head. Like, am I missing something? And yeah, if we rotate the image, come on, look what happens. Bear with me. It's a little bit hard to rotate with this touchpad, but can you see what's happening? It's no longer a giraffe, but it's a penguin. And this see whatever you want to see ad campaign. And actually, we'll re rotate it back to the giraffe head. Um, there are others in this series. Oh, let's see. Where do I have it? OK, there's a whole bunch. So here's one where looked at in one direction. It's a turkey. Or I think that's a turkey. <laughs> or maybe it's a uh, what kind of bird is that? A duck, a swan? I don't know. But anyway, it's some sort of fowl. And looked at another way, it's an elephant. Um, and one of the, I think, interesting things you can do with the ad analysis is ask yourself questions. So one question I would have is, okay, yeah, it's a neat trick, but why are they using animals? Like, why do that? And if anybody has ideas, they can they can shout them out. Um, Mr. Powell says color. Okay. That's another interesting thing. The color here, right? Beige, tan, camel. Camel isn't just an animal. It's also a color. Khaki. And notice it's not a solid beige or khaki. It's got that sort of grainy look. So why would we do that? Okay, we're getting some good ideas here. Uh, Emery says, it's a Jeep. They're all about exploration. Good. Grace says something similar. Off-road exploring. Great. Uh, Mr. Powell says, because Jeeps are usually used on safaris and wildlife. Yes, absolutely. So, right, this wouldn't work for Toyota uh, or Hyundai, right? Jeep has, you think of the word Jeep, and it already brings to mind, right, that classic Jeep image. You know, the open air, uh, smaller, kind of moon buggy style thing that yeah you can streak across the australian outback or visit the serengeti in africa right it's not that all cheap automobiles are like that obviously there's a whole suv line that uh targets families uh but yeah but that's the image that comes to mind with jeep right yeah <laughs> no doors right but that's the classic that's what we immediately think of when we think of jeep okay so good so the use of animals isn't just accidental it ties in with what we think when we use the word Jeep. What about color? Someone mentioned color before. Why not just a solid sky blue color? Why not white or black? Okay, great. And Mr. Powell, the only reason I don't say your first name is because I don't know how to pronounce it. So if you can teach me in the chat somehow, that would be great. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he says earth tones. Good. Because what does this color remind you of? burlap sack or maybe a canvas tent khaki right uh jaman or jamon um i'm asking the student <laughs> still how to pronounce his name but yeah this color it yeah it invokes those sorts of images right earthiness burlap sacks the canvas quality of a tent that loose khaki clothing that you might wear in the desert okay so color isn't accidental either um what about the playful the playfulness of the the trick right looked at one way it's a giraffe head looked at another way it's a penguin why do that is that just them having fun or could we make any guesses about that uh, it gets people talk about the ad. Yes, definitely that. But there are other ways to get attention. They don't have to do that. Uh, looks can be deceiving. Okay. But how could that maybe be applied to Jeep? Because that's what I want to, us to get used to is like no details accidental. So yes, it's playful and it's fun. But we'll, I would argue that this campaign would not work for another automobile company, even in, in its playfulness. Carlos says, it says, see what you want to see. Okay, yes, it definitely 
uh, works with the tagline. See whatever you want to see. And there's a double meaning there, right? Of course, the ad allows you to see whatever you want to see because one way it's a giraffe, the other way it's a penguin. Uh, but it's also that off-roading, that sense of adventure, right? The idea that you can use your Jeep, as Carlos says, for multiple things. And that could mean, yeah, using it in the Serengeti or Antarctica to see penguins, but also just in the more mundane sense. Uh, maybe you have no interest in off-roading, but Jeep is still speaking to that sort of um, inner desire that people have, right? That kind of appeal that the Jeep name has. So maybe your adventure is picking up the kids from school or hauling that piece of Ikea furniture. But still, when you buy that Jeep, you're buying in to this sort of, that quality, right? That versatility. So maybe I'm reading too much into it, but that kind of versatility, the playfulness of the image, I think also ties into the brand name. Again, it's not, it wouldn't work for another automobile brand. As Grace says, Jeeps are not only for safari exploration. Right, so even though it has that strong connotation, um, by the way, I'm currently trying to write an essay about this. I may not have it done in time for this month, but I'd like to have a model essay so people can see. Um, but yeah, these are the ideas that I'm going to talk about in the essay. Um, and Grace, that's one thing I'm going to touch on, which is even though, it, yes, we, th we see the name Jeep and we think of all these things like exploration, uh, but it can still appeal to even the average consumer, right? I have no interest in off-roading. But now that I've been working with this ad for a while, I don't know. <laughs> I'm starting to think maybe my next automobile would be a Jeep. Ads don't just sell products. They sell ideas. And if you can be attracted to the idea, it stands a good chance that maybe you'll purchase the product. right? Why else would I be maybe tempted to make my next automobile purchase a Jeep? Maybe it's because of ad campaigns like this. Um, so yeah, lots of great things here. And already in an essay, we could have a paragraph that talks about use of color. We could have a paragraph that talks about, right, the image of, of the use of animals. Because um, it's definitely tying into an earthiness, an eco-themed kind of, uh, yeah, message that ties in with Jeep. Uh, versatility. Um, all that comes across in this very kind of simple although not so simple, but simple in terms of um, it's not super flashy, uh, but all that comes across in a similar, uh, excuse me, simple looking ad. Hold on, I'm trying to turn off something here. Okay, um, let's look at another example. We'll talk about more, a little bit about this more next week, uh, but yeah, figure that you should probably be noticing three or four things that work in the ad. So, for example, color, that's a rich enough topic to write a whole paragraph about. Um, and if you have three or four distinct things that you notice, those can become your body paragraphs. Surround that with a general introduction and a conclusion, and you've got yourself an essay. Uh, but, yeah, I want people to become comfortable noticing those three or four elements. Um, let's look at another car ad. Okay, this is for MG a now defunct, I believe, automobile company. And this is actually an old ad. This is from 1972. Uh, but still, I like to look at it because it's, uh, we just looked at an automobile ad and it doesn't feature an image of a car. It doesn't feature people. Uh, but here is one that does. There's the car. There's a person. What do we notice here? What can we say about this? What are some of the things that you immediately notice? You can see my notes here. <laughs> Maybe I should <laughs> hide those. <laughs> um, again, use the chat. What are things that you immediately notice? And don't worry if you, about meaning necessarily. Just what are the things that stand out to you? We notice lots of interesting things about the Jeep ad. What do we notice in this ad? Jacob says, car stats. Okay, they're there. But one of the interesting things I would say is I don't think that's where your eye goes first. Like you find that later, right? And that's a layout decision. I'm not saying that that's not a good point. I'm saying that, yeah, the ad is, there's information, but it's sort of tucked down here. It's not where your eye goes first. 
Uh, Grace says, if your mother wouldn't like it, your date would. Okay, there, yeah, I, I see what you're saying. There is something there, right? But what is it that your mother wouldn't like? Michael says, warm colors coming off the photo. Okay, good. Right, these warm orange colors from the movie theater. Carlos says, MGB is sexy. Yes. <laughs> Don't be afraid to mention things like this. Okay. How do we know it's... Uh, by the way, okay, the car is sexy, but is it just the car? We're adults. I mean, how how do we know that sexuality is playing a role in this ad? Or maybe that's too obvious a question. But yeah, we have to point out specific details. Okay, we can't just say general, banal things like sex sells or sex. Okay, we have to point out specific details. Carl says because she is cold. <laughs> yeah, well, not, let's be adults. Okay, this is 1972. Look at her pose. She's wearing pants, not a dress. And yeah, she's not wearing a bra. Okay, this is a liberated woman. And that's not an accident. So people shouldn't be shy. Okay, that's a deliberate choice. It's no accident that she appears this way. Uh, Jacob says she contrasts against the rest of the picture. Okay. Yeah, and, and part of that's due to color. Okay, so we have orange reds the orange of the shirt her blue jeans make her stand out against the red car all this is analytical stuff all this is good okay um other details by the way this is an old ad but this could be a current day ad too like it's currently trendy to sort of invoke this time period has anybody seen that uh, i think it's jose cuervo tequila commercial where it references the Rolling Stones legendary, I think it was around the same time, 1972 concert tour. Famous because I guess it was an alcohol-soaked tour. Um, anyway, it's it's the commercial where it's on a plane and text appears that says that the Rolling Stones had this famous tour. Um, and that it's, there's a diverse, diverse cast of characters on the plane and the Rolling Stones music is playing. And yeah, the suggestion is, is that because I guess Jose Cuervo really was something that the band members drank a lot of during that tour. Um, the idea is you're not just buying a tequila, you're tapping into this legendary pastime. Um, I, I could easily see a contemporary automobile playing with that retro feel, taking us back to the 1970s with such an ad. Um, this is really from 1972. Um, but like, notice the movie. Okay, this is a movie theater. Last Tango in Paris is playing. I don't know how many people here are familiar with that movie, but that would be something to research because you would find out that Last Tango in Paris is a, uh, <laughs> it fits this ad. Okay, Last Tango in Paris was a controversial movie. It's also a kind of movie your mother wouldn't like you to see. Right, so even that's not accidental. Uh, someone said the guy in the background looking in her direction. Right. She draws attention, okay? And I don't know, did we answer that question? What is it that your mother wouldn't like? <laughs> or what is the image that MG wants to communicate? Remember, ads don't just sell products, they also sell ideas. Like what's attractive about this automobile? If I said Jeep's image is that sense of adventure, what is the connection here? And it's coming across in everything you guys mentioned. The colors, the guy staring at the woman, the woman herself. Jacob says it's a time from conservative views. Actually, it's kind of the opposite. This was a time of uh, liberation. Okay, Women going brawless. Uh, men and women feeling more independent. Going against social norms. Um, and I guess I'm answering my own question there. That's kind of what's being communicated in this ad and grace says having that car can attract ladies yeah that's part of it right it's this idea that this world here young people liberated breaking the rules right doing things your mother wouldn't like that's going to come when you purchase this automobile your mother might not like that but maybe that appeals to you 
cool. If I buy this car, I'm doing exactly the thing my mother wouldn't like. And that feels great, right? Um, all that comes through here. And even things like, again, I, I said, ask yourself questions. Why is there a woman in this ad? Why is she dressed this way? Why is the car bright red, fire engine red? What does the overall environment look like? Why this movie? Right? No details accidental. accidental. Uh, because this isn't one of your chosen ad options, I'll just explain. Last Tango in Paris is a controversial, very sexual movie. Very sexual. So that's not an accident. Uh, the scene here looks like it's maybe evening. Right? So what kind of person would be outside this movie theater showing this film late at night? Uh, again, people notice that the guy is looking her way. Um, yeah, the environment. Uh, red can communicate danger. Uh, but it's also a sexual color. Okay, so the bright red convertible. Um, all this is working together to, again, yeah, sell an idea. If you purchase this car, um, you're entering this world. It's a world that your mother wouldn't like necessarily, but maybe you would, right? Like I'm 45 years old. I think I'm mature enough not to go through a midlife crisis, but maybe I would be interested in the car. <laughs> not because I think I'm young or not because I think I'll be like these people, but maybe I'm attracted kind of like with a Jeep. I may not be an off-roading type, but maybe I like the lure of the Jeep image. Maybe even though I know I'm not going to return to my youth, maybe I like that sense of danger that such a car communicates. So, does by the way, is all of this making sense in terms of the things that you should be looking at? And in your choice of commercials, like here's a McDonald's commercial. Um, there's a lot of interesting things going on there. And you have not all of these, actually only three are print ads. So commercials have other things going on. Sound, narration how the video or commercial is shot um, and other things that we've already talked about use of color. Uh, but commercials are in some ways more dynamic. Okay. Um, so yeah, make sure that you're choosing an ad that you feel most comfortable that, <clears throat> excuse me, that you could put together um, an essay around. And again, it's about identifying those three or four elements in this one. Uh, use of color could be a paragraph. Sexuality is very, very general. But gosh, maybe two or three paragraphs could be written about that. Just the image of a woman, the woman would be enough for a single paragraph, okay? Or the environment as a whole and what it communicates. Um, so yeah, ads have a lot of things going on and they're not accidental. Okay, let me speed up here a little bit. By the way, you guys are doing awesome. Oh, I wanted to show real quickly, um, MG... They're, they're fascinating ads. Like I said, I know that they're older ads, uh, but you could easily picture a contemporary company doing a similar thing. Here are some other ads in the series. So notice here, for example, uh, the suggestion is that it's Dawn. These are just regular looking people, but notice the two principles. This guy's dressed in a tuxedo. This woman's also wearing some sort of evening wear. So what's the suggestion? They've probably been out all night. Right? Would your mother approve of that? <laughs> Probably not. But again, MG wants to create that sort of feel. Uh, you know, the people who are liberated, people who are young, or at least youthful feeling, uh, the types of people who would spend all night partying or being at a club or not going to sleep, and here they are still awake at dawn grabbing coffee. Right? MG is the automobile for you. Uh, what's another good one here? Or this one. Like this one's fascinating too because notice most of the people are blurred. So they're not they're not distinct. Who is? The couple coming out of the hotel. Again, what kind of person comes out of the hotel? <laughs> what have they been doing in the hotel? Uh, again, your mother wouldn't approve. But that's actually not a negative because that's the image MG wants to create. Okay. Sorry for all the bouncing back and forth. Um, remember, who is who is the message trying to reach? The audience is never everyone. Okay, sometimes I see that. I chose McDonald's ad. The audience is everyone. 
true everyone just about everyone eats at mcdonald's but the specific ad or commercial isn't targeting everyone as a matter of fact mcdonald's they target all sorts of different demographics um in different commercials there are commercials that you know appeal to families or there's a mcdonald's ad that will appeal to young people or teenagers um even for specific markets there are mcdonald's ads in spanish right a specific ad never targets everyone okay um so you might want to think about also target audience um i mean the target audience can be kind of broad i would say in the jeep ad it's not literally targeting people who are looking to go on a safari but i say it is appealing to people who find that image attractive right it's kind of speaking to the inner adventurous person in all of us whether you are that person or not um companies want to obviously reach more than just their target audience but in the mg ad sure it's probably targeting younger people more liberated people people who are willing to break the rules or go against societal norms but other people might find that ad attractive or that product attractive too uh but but yeah the ad isn't everyone I'm going to skip by this because it's actually taking me a little bit longer than I thought to get through all this. But here's just another reminder of uh, same product, bicycles. And this is also a very, very old ad, uh, but different ways of communicating it, right? So here's a guy. He's kind of the, the leader of the pack, <clears throat> looks athletic with his shorts. Um, he's pedaling. And look at the other side, right? A woman, conservatively dressed, doesn't even have her foot on the pedals, looks like she's wearing impractical, non-athletic shoes. Um, she's riding for comfort to be content, right? So two very, very different images because we're trying to reach different audiences. One has the promise of athleticism and being a leader. The other one stresses comfort. Um, ads can use different ways to reach an audience. And there are three classic ones and they have fancy Greek uh, words. Pathos is the appeal to emotion. So if you've ever seen those really sad commercials for the ASPCA with Sarah McLaughlin, the singer, and it's just filled with sad, sad images of dogs and cats and cages, and it breaks your heart, and the commercial never ends. You try to go to another station, <laughs> and you go back, and the ad is still going on. So that's an example of emotion working over time. Uh, but it doesn't have to be that serious of emotion. I would argue that the MG ad, the convertible ad, is using emotion. Okay, it's appealing to, right? It's seductive. Okay, that's emotion. Uh, logos is the appeal to logic. An obvious example of that would be, for example, a toothpaste commercial that says seven out of 10 dentists prefer Crest. Okay, that's logic. Uh, ethos is kind of the hardest one to describe. It's that sense of trust, credibility. It's that sense that when you watch something or read something that you trust the information for some reason. For example, when I write feedback on your assignments, you're probably going to trust what I say because I'm the instructor and I supposedly have the educational background, the experience to say what I'm saying with confidence. Okay, so it's that sense of trust or credibility that comes across in an ad. Um, even in the Jeep ad, I would say ethos is working in the sense that Jeep's brand is so well known and it already has an image connected to it that Jeep can draw upon that image in an ad like the one that we looked at. I would even say that's an example of ethos. Trust, credibility comes across just because you know that Jeep is the kind of brand that could create an ad like that. Um, thesis statements, you've probably all heard this word before, right? Thesis, maybe in high school English class or if you took a college level class. Thesis is just a fancy way of saying it's a single sentence, sometimes two, that typically comes at the very end of your introduction paragraph. Okay, we don't just jump right into the middle of the essay. We typically write a setup paragraph, an introductory paragraph that sets up the rest of the paper. Um, and that paragraph typically ends with a thesis statement. And the thesis statement, hold on, my cursor just disappeared again. Let me move things around a little bit. Uh, a good way to kind of formulate a thesis statement is to think of it as taking your general topic and adding what you think is significant. Okay, maybe that sounds general or it doesn't make complete sense. So look, let's look at some examples, okay? Where we take the topic, which in this case is your ad, and then add the point of significance. Um, and a good way to do this, by the way, if you need to take notes, 
or take a screenshot or just remember to revisit this section of the of the lecture. This is pretty important information. Um, a good way to think about it is filling in these blanks. The name of the ad targets who here you fill it in with your specific audience um, using blank blank and blank. Those are your specific details. Okay, in order to do X. Okay, that's a lot to remember, but believe me, you'll be able to do it intuitively because here are some examples and we'll use the MG and the cheap ad. So here's the thesis statement. The MG, your mother wouldn't like it ad, uses color and seductive imagery to sell a promise that one can feel sexy, rebellious, and free when driving uh, this roadster. Okay. And I'm using separate colors so you can see the separate parts of the sentence. But what's in black is probably, this is what's going to become your points of analysis. Uh, like I said, figure that you need to see three or four things because those will become your body paragraphs. Here I only list two, but that's because seductive imagery can be broken down. I could easily write separate paragraphs about the image of the woman or the environment. Okay. Um, so yeah, I could easily create three paragraphs, one about the general use of color, and then two paragraphs that kind of deal with the seductive imagery. Maybe the imagery of the women and then the imagery of the environment itself, right? The movie in the background, the guy looking her way. Um, but there's the thesis, okay? Our topic plus significance, what we're going to analyze and what it's trying to do. Um, here's one for the Jeep ad. Through the simple, uh, excuse me, through the use of simple color, Playful imagery and a double meaning tagline. Uh, the see whatever you want to see ad success, excuse me, successfully reinforces the Jeep brand, appealing to consumers' inner desire for adventure in an auto automobile. Is this making sense? The general thing you're trying to do in a, in a thesis? Yes? Okay, good. And listen, like, how do I go back a slide? Hold on. <laughs> Where was I? I mean, if you don't fill in every single blank, don't worry. And you can certainly pull back and be a bit more general or be a bit more broad. But yes, your opening paragraph should end with a sentence that sets up the rest of the paper. And here's the Jeep. I'm currently writing an essay because I'd like to use it as a model. Um, and I've already written an introduction paragraph where I talk about yeah, Jeep's image, right? There you go, downshifting around a snaky mountain bend or kicking up dust uh, in the sun-baked Australian outback or zooming past zebras grazing the Serengeti. Um, and then I get to my thesis, the one you just saw, although I fixed some wording here that I didn't like. Through the use of simple color, playful imagery, and a double meaning tagline, this ad successfully reinforces the Jeep brand, okay? Because that sort of sentence sets up the rest of my paper. And then I can get into, for example, a paragraph about that use of color how it's not accidental that that beige background brings to mind earthy, rugged images. Okay, so that's what you'll need to do in your thesis statement. Um, I'm going to wrap things up, I promise. I actually thought I had too little material. <laughs> um, okay, blah, 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 blah. Okay, let's talk about the worksheets and then we'll close things out, okay? Because these last three slides deal with that. Um, and this final slide uh, is crucial. Whatever ad you choose, you choose um, using this lecture as inspiration, now it's your chance to notice as many details as possible. If we go into the week one activity, you have a set of instructions. So be sure to read this. They're pretty basic, but you basically need to remember that you'll use Microsoft Word which won't be, well, actually you'll need Microsoft Word, the, the documents already provided for you to fill out, and then it needs to be handed in to turnitin.com. And here's the worksheet itself, or here's the worksheet itself. Okay, so this is what you're going to fill out, and you have several questions to answer. Name the ad, what details stand out, and you should be filling up the space. And don't worry, you can nudge these things down farther. Don't think because you ran out of space you can't type anymore. Um, just as we did with the two car ads, you should be taking your ad and going through as many details as possible. Um, and don't worry, list as many things as possible, even if you can't make sense out of everything. Um, but yeah, it does ask you why do you think these details were used. And if you're not comfortable with one detail, maybe you look at the McDonald's commercial and you notice something, but you're not sure why. First, you can run by 
your ideas with me. I can probably help you. Uh, but second, if you notice half a dozen details, remember, you just need three or four of the ones you feel most com uh, comfortable and confident with when you write your essay. Okay, your essay is not going to list a dozen things. You'll probably concentrate on three and three or four key things. Um, then you just have to answer the rest of the questions. What is the ad selling? Not just literally what it's selling. The McDonald's ad, for example, doesn't show food at all, pretty much until the very end. Okay, ads sell ideas, not just the product itself. So that's what this question is getting at. Uh, target audience. Okay, audience is never everyone. So see if you can guess who the audience is trying to reach. Even if it is a bit broad, again, the Jeep ad, maybe it's not specific in terms of 18 to 25 year olds or teenage girls or senior citizens. But still, we can, like I did in my thesis statement, describe it as uh, people who have that inner desire for adventure. Okay. Anyway, I won't go through every question, but your job is to fill out this worksheet as thoroughly as possible after watching your chosen ad several times. Okay, and that's what this reminder is, because the more detailed you are in your essay, the easier it's going to be to write your essay, because right now we're generating ideas. And then my task will be to look over your worksheet and point out the, de uh, the ideas that I think are richest. And I'll tell you, like, oh, this is really good. Uh, you could write about a paragraph just about this. Um, that's my task, to sort of steer you down the path of finding those three or four key details that you'll then turn into paragraphs in your paper. Um, Okay, we're right at 8 o'clock, so let's open things up to questions. Does anybody have specific questions over anything we've gone over, whether it's course basics, course setup, uh, whether it's the first assignment, anything with McGraw-Hill, anything about ad analysis, now is the time to ask away. Emery says none come to mind for him. Okay. Um, if you are comfortable with what we've gone over, I'm not going to trap you here. I'm going to hang out for, for about 5, 10 minutes to answer questions, but if you are confident with what we've discussed you are allowed to enjoy the rest of your evening and if i don't hear from you again please have a terrific thanksgiving enjoy your time away hopefully though maybe you can find some time after the holiday and black friday shopping to spend some time with your chosen ad and the worksheet because it's not due sunday night it's due monday at midnight uh, but you will have to find time to to work on it and where he says, is it possible to be wrong in regards to the target audience? Uh, oh, sure, it, it's possible. I, I mean, if you say that the MG ad is targeting senior citizens, I would say that's wrong. <laughs> but no, I mean, it's not wrong in the sense that you'll be penalized or lose points. I, I, I want to see you, I want to see all students genuinely filling in that worksheet with as much specific information and thoughts and ideas as possible. And, but yeah, there's no penalty for being wrong. And, and listen, there is some interpretive wiggle room. Uh, maybe some of my thoughts about Jeep you don't agree with. Maybe, or maybe you think I'm reading too much into it, suggesting that the playfulness and versatility of the ad also says something about the versatility of the automobile and its line. Uh, so yeah, you do have some room to interpret, okay? But it has to always be attached to the ad itself. Um, you should always be able to point to something in the ad that backs up what you're saying. Because sometimes, it's not often, but sometimes I see students wander too far away from the ad or make claims that couldn't possibly be justified based on what the ad shows. Uh, Grace says, do we get graded on completely finishing the LSA? Uh, you get graded on percentage. And I don't know if students, no, I think students can see how far along you are. Do I still have it open? Let me close some things here. Uh, no, I don't have it open anymore. Uh, but yeah, you should be able to see your percent progress. So if you only get 33% one day and you come back to it, you should be able to see that you're 33% along, along the way. So like I said, if you get 86% of the way through, your, your grade is an 86. Uh, but yeah, people shouldn't have too much trouble getting it 100% completed because those are... Again, easy points. Uh, Jacob says, can we use an ad that's not on the list? No, it has to be an ad from the list. I know that's frustrating because people think, oh, but I love this ad. Uh, but it makes it difficult because if 75 students start choosing 75 different ads, um, that makes it more difficult for me. Also, sometimes it's also dangerous because students will 
just last month I had a student who, what did he want to write about? I think it was an ad that featured an athlete. I think it was LeBron, LeBron James, the Cleveland Cavs. And I had to tell him, no, you have to choose from the approved list. But I also reminded him that it's not about choosing the coolest ad. Okay. Um, you should be able to analyze any ad. Like I mentioned earlier, the Altoids Wintergreen Mint ad. Okay, let's take a quick look at that. I hate those pop-ups. This is the ad I would choose to write about. Do I love Altoids Wintergreen Mints? No. Am I that passionately drawn into this ad? No. <laughs> I mean, no, actually, I do kind of like the ad. Uh, but, it's yeah, it's not the most exciting ad in the world to me. There are cooler commercials out there. Uh, but I feel confident I could say a lot about this ad, a lot. So, yeah, I get a little bit nervous when, when students want to use an ad that's not on the list, not because I don't trust them. Uh, but, but, yeah, it makes it a little bit difficult for me. And, two, sometimes they pick an ad that they love and are excited about, but they're not sure what to say. <laughs> Um, so, in, in, yeah, you should be able to add anything. Or uh, the McDonald's commercial. Not really crazy about that commercial as a commercial, but I love it in terms of that there are a dozen things going on in that commercial. And that makes it a great choice to write about. So, yeah, I apologize if maybe you don't love every ad, but the ads are all chosen because I feel like they have multiple things going on that can be talked about. Does that make sense? Any other questions? I certainly recommend, though, even though you can't choose an ad that's off the list, if people want to run an ad by me just to get my sense of it, I'm certainly open to looking at different ads because if it is really terrific, maybe I'll use it in a future class. But, yeah, for this class, you have to choose one of those. And there are eight of them, so hopefully there's one that you feel like you can write about. Juan says we have to submit the project to turn it in. Yes, every assignment. So... The worksheet. Next week, there's an outline due. In week three, there's your draft of your essay. Week four, there's the revision of the essay. Okay, all that gets handed into turnitin.com. Am I forgetting anything that gets handed in there? Let's see. Here we go. Yeah, that's about it, right? The worksheet, the outline, the actual draft of your essay, uh, the revision. And they, yeah, at the very end of the class, there's a short self-reflection uh, essay. It's, it's actually not difficult, so don't get frightened. Think, oh my gosh, another essay on top of everything? This is pretty, it's more just you reflecting on the course, how you think you've progressed as a writer. It's a low-stakes activity. It, it's not even graded. You do get a penalty for not doing it, but yeah, it's not actually... Rated. So it's pretty low stakes, uh, but all that gets submitted to turnitin.com. Okay, good questions. Any other questions? So we won't use the normal way to submit. If you mean submitting it to the FSO platform, no. It's just, it's easier if it's all one way or all the other way. And because Turnitin does check for things like plagiarism, and it has a nifty set of tools that we instructors can use. Um, yeah, we don't want people getting confused. Okay, this one gets handed into turnitin.com, but this one doesn't. <laughs> um, so, yeah, just it's easier just to everything gets submitted there. You're welcome, sir. <clears throat> Any other final questions? You're welcome, Grace. Again, if, if people don't have questions, you're allowed to go enjoy the rest of your evening and holiday. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording because some of these questions will be useful for people to watch it later, but it seems like things are slowing down, so I'm going to stop the recording now.